um, but maybe I don't know if you're comfortable speaking Portuguese. Maybe we could try. We can try, but I think uh, English is better for. You think precision. English is better? Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see how it flows then. So your film has this um, encounter between very personal story and um, the world around you, and you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I wanted to know about the process here because I imagine there was no script or, I mm -hmm. mean, in the beginning. So I, I wanted you to tell us about the process. So in terms of script, I wrote it at the kind of, during the editing process. So when I set on this journey, uh, I only knew what I was looking for and what kind of stories I was kind of, Mm, keen to collect, uh, which is related to my own personal stories, because uh, for me it was important to kind of exchange uh, and share vulnerabilities, mm, not just like uh, their stories, but also, you know, because it's always the kind of uh, mutual process of uh, sharing stories. And um, so, uh, when I heard about this uh, font, uh, I just found it so like um, magical. Also the kind of uh, histories and kind of legends. And um, so I decided to have it as a kind of, um, um, how do you call it? Um, uh, MacGuffin. So it's like an excuse to, to uh, like travel, excuse to uh, it's like a quest premise so that I can uh, ask you, ask people and it, it can be a trigger uh, for an encounter and conversation and exchange. Uh, so I had this already before the trip. And, um, but of course I had no idea what kind of people, what kind of stories I was gonna encounter. And then during the process, I yeah, started to feel like I took some diaries and notes, field notes, and based on this, and um, I actually did three trips um, and with different uh, um, cinematographers, different, uh, um, yeah, uh, person in charge of uh, image. We okay. went to Algarve, we went south across uh, Alentejo. So it was always a kind of same direction, but not exactly the same route. So we sometimes did some detours following our instincts and uh, yeah, going with the flow. And of course, um, so I, I, I worked with three uh, cinematographers and of course our uh, interaction and our dialogue also uh, affected uh, how we, you know, encounter with the people and also um, uh, the route as well, because uh, we constantly had a conversation. Uh, and of course, in the story, I fictionalized as if I was only traveling with one, you know, friend. But in reality, there were two other cinematographers, um, um, like traveling with me in different times. Uh, and um, so in terms of fictional element and the like uh, unscripted, unexpected, like uh, documentary, if you call it, uh, these elements uh, were kind of yeah, constantly mixed. Uh, so I had this kind of um, uh, idea or a fascination about this fountain, half like mythical, half like, you know, uh, down to earth. And um, so like my heartbreak was also kind of uh, introduced. Of course, I didn't, you know, seriously believe that the, the water of the fountain would heal a heartbreak. But of course, people, we all do kind of this kind of fictionalization for doing something, no? like uh, any sentimental journey or whatever, you know, go, you go, you, you have kind of a, everybody likes this kind of making stories for themselves, you know, like going for, I'm visiting here to do this and that, uh, not necessarily that is exactly the reason. So it's a kind of like that. And um, during the editing process, I started to see the connections between different encounters or different elements that um, I didn't, I hadn't uh, expected um, when shooting or when planning uh, 
these trips. So uh, in, uh, there was a lot of like also um, scripting process after or during the editing. Because for example, I think you, you keep hearing uh, my voiceover throughout the film. Like, um, like first explaining why I'm traveling or you know, sometimes reflecting on the encounter about the uh, different fountains uh, we uh, get to know or kind of a, uh, at the end, this kind of a punchline-ish uh, this uh, thing. Uh, these were all like scripted afterwards and based on the script, of course, I, I used my voice. But of course, during the trip, I didn't, you know, these voices were not recorded during the trips. It was after uh, filming and the traveling. Okay. Actually, you answered one of my questions. I was going to ask you about the crew, like how many people were mm -hmm. traveling with you actually, and if Krish was the only uh, person with you. Um, but I also wanted to ask you, since you said you worked with three different cinematographers, if the result we have is a product of these three trips, or you cho you picked one? No, uh, it's combined it's out combined. of okay. three different. Uh, okay. And I found it very, I really appreciate that their own, uh, that, that the difference and the kind of also the coherence among the three different cinematographers I tried to build and uh, with them through a lot of dialogues. And I'm really happy with, because I, I can, I personally can feel uh, individual signatures so this image or this encounter, of course, could happen because uh, like I was with this cinematographer. And, um, but uh, at the same time, there's this kind of a coherence. Uh, I like needed uh, to, to, to have a kind of a, the story, a coherent story. And um, we tried to build this uh, through a lot of like, um, conversations and um, like a what kind of encounters I want uh, meet, uh, through this meeting with people. And also uh, the second trip, third trip, we checked the materials from the previous trips uh, so that uh, other like second and third uh, cinematographers could also refer to the previous materials, like what kind of uh, forms uh, even though I, I completely um, asked them to like film freely, I didn't really have a specific, okay, this direction or that direction, like I, it was completely up to each um, cinematographer. Uh, and I feel uh, they also, I hope they also enjoyed. Maybe Marta can talk about this process uh, if she can be present right. in the festival. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I want you to talk about, the limitations and the problems uh, involved in filming your own trip, uh, mm -hmm. especially um, being as it is a, a, an intimate trip. Uh, how, how did you manage to talk about such uh, intimate things like the loss of your grandma and heartbreaks and all that in, through this medium, cinema? Okay, maybe I can talk about the like uh, obstacles or struggles I had. Uh, of course, I had a lot of problems, uh, including this kind of, you know, falling into the ditch and uh, everything. But uh, um, what was most uh, difficult in the beginning was, of course, um, uh, pointing a camera to the people I meet for the first time without having time to build a relationship or trust. Uh, that was the most difficult thing, and um, and of course, if you're just following somebody filming, then uh, it's you know you feel less kind of uh, confronted because you are kind of a third person, but you are also at the same time um, you know like uh, like kind of um, implying the need for permission or. Um, and it, it was very difficult because um, before I had only made portraits or films uh, with the people who I already had built a relationship with. So you take time getting to know and then you start filming. But this time, because, because of the nature of what I was interested in, uh, I was interested in the first 
encounters uh, when the, the differences and the clash or frictions of these encounters are like most present. Uh, because once you get to know each other, you get familiar with each other, you also lose this, you know, like um, non commendable like uh, not easy surface. So it gets kind of smoother and smoother once you get to know with a person. So I wanted to have this kind of um, clunky, uh, uh, frictive um, moments. And uh, that's also something to do with my obsession with uh, imperfect language as well. Mm, and um, so anyway, so like it was difficult, but um, I was talking with um, my colleagues, collaborators, and also um, uh, the, some people in, in, in the school because mm, it was part of my like a diplom project and um, and I at some point I heard like my, like somebody saying that um, because I was so scared of you know filming someone I'm meeting for the first time so like um, yeah somebody said that I can also trust their own ability to say no and to refuse so I was you know kind of closing uh, I was afraid because I was Kind of cal calculating everything in my head oh it's it's a violence to put the camera you know you have to be in the relationship but if it's annoying if it's, it's uncomfortable for them they can also say you know stop it or you know they can also refuse and i could um yeah i realized that you know i should trust their own uh ability or in freedom uh to to say no and that kind of Okay, if it doesn't work, you know, I can stop, but I don't have to be afraid. I will, yeah, I can start, we can start. And um, yeah, and um, that's, I think, uh, I hope it's answering one of the yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> and yeah, limitations, of course. Um, um, I think it's also related to this. Uh, it, it can all, all on, um, so it was also kind of a easy way out as well to put myself as well, because not just exposing these people, but exposing myself kind of ethically, you know, can balance a bit. And I'm also showing my stupidity. I'm also showing my vulnerable part, uh, vulnerable, yeah, uh, like a fragility, whatever. And, so it can also ethically um, somehow uh, help, but there are also other ways, you know, then this can be also uh, possibly an easy way out. So um, there are things that um, without the director in the film, there are things that we can only, you know, see. Uh, so of course it's, uh, you know, uh, a choice you have to make, but um, for this film, I felt yeah, I, I also need to be there, and yeah. Um, um, I see. You, I see you thought a lot about this. I mean, it's not like um, uh, you know, uh, just just didn't come out like that. You thought a lot about this, and I, I also mm. I always wonder at how you can talk about such uh, personal and intimate things in a with a certain, um, I would say, aesthetical um, detachment, you know, because you, because it's not cheesy. I think it's big part is kind of unconscious because I, even with friends, I like, um, I'm shy basically. Uh, so it's kind of difficult to like um, share these things as, um, how can I say, like, um, monologue way uh -huh. kind of I, I i'm bad at like telling these things or like in a very serious way i kind of uh i can share these stories only when it can be kind of a joke or i feel very yeah shy i think this kind of a making into a joke is also kind of a maybe it's a, also one way of like protecting uh, or one way of like, um, mm, I don't know, 
uh, okay, now very introvert way uh, or you know like um, uh, therapeutic way. And I, I I don't know. I have this instinctive rejection to this uh, mm, way. My just myself. I I I'm not saying you know. Uh, I, I appreciate people sharing stories like that way. And I just cannot, uh, just with my context and how I grew up, I am very bad at, uh, mm, yeah, telling intimate stories that way. So it always has to be kind of um, mm, told by uh, another person in me or kind of making fun of myself. And yeah, maybe, yeah. Um, and another question, because uh, even though we're not speaking Portuguese, I know you can speak Portuguese a bit, at least. Um, also, you were talking about that uh, obsession you have with imperfect language. So I, I, I believe you like learning languages, right? Because you also made this crazy dictionary, Kirgs, uh, Japanese and um, you also work as a translator sometimes yes okay um, so I, I wanted you to tell us a bit about your relationship with Portugal how it uh, started and how it developed um, mm -hmm. something some notes you have on it so of course in, in the story I uh, I lie as you know I'm telling, uh, like, I'm traveling, uh, I'm making this trip to Portugal to do this thing, but of course it's a fiction and that, this part. Uh, and I, cause I was studying there uh, through, uh, as, a, as part of the Erasmus uh, Mundus program. And, um, and yeah, and it was um, like a three universities, Hung Portugal, Hungary, Belgium, and uh, like a collaborating in one program. Right, we're talking and about Doc Nomads, right? Doc Nomads, exactly. Yeah, okay. And, and the first semester I had, and um, after three semesters in each countries, I came back to Portugal. Mm, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to come back also to make a film there. And also I appreciated the uh, teachers there. And uh, also, yeah, I had a good feeling and yeah, I loved uh, learning Portuguese and um, also um, like trying to have a broken conversation. Uh, and yeah, people are open um, to, you know, like um, exchange things, even if they don't understand, even if I don't understand, that was very precious. And I, I am very grateful uh, for that uh yeah oh that's so nice of you um have you been to Viseu? no i wish i could oh um i haven't been there i you want to go there next time yes. you're in portugal yes definitely